Hello and welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little and I'm a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to worship with you today. Our call to worship. Wonderful is the God of Christ who gathers the poor of the earth. Glorious is our God who wipes away the tears of sorrow. Wonderful is the God of Christ who gives inheritance to the meek. Glorious is our God who satisfies the hunger of the just. Wonderful is the God of Christ who gives mercy to the merciful. Glorious is our God who gives vision to the pure in heart. Wonderful is the God of Christ who adopts the peacemakers. Glorious is our God who lifts high the persecuted. Wonderful is the God of Christ who finds the lost. Glorious is our God who awakens the dead. We begin our service in prayer. God of blessings and woes, bless us this day with lives filled with love, caring, generosity, and deep abiding hope. We pray that your kingdom will dwell among all people and that we may be instruments of your love and your grace. Open our hearts with the joy of healing, a world filled with brokenness and pain. In the name of the one who taught us the ways of light and love, be in our worship and in our very lives. Amen. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for the power came out from him and healed all of them. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through 26. This reading reminds us of the phrase, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. This phrase has been often applied to good preaching, and the words were just, we just heard from Jesus certainly qualify. But I was surprised to learn that this phrase was first used to describe not preaching, but newspapers. In the early 1900s, Chicago humorist Finley Peter Dunn wrote, The newspaper does everything for us. It runs the police force and the banks, commands the militia, controls the legislature, baptizes the young, marries the foolish, comforts the afflicted and afflicts the comfortable, buries the dead and roasts them afterward. Mr. Dunn was lampooning the power of the news media to shape events by the way those events get reported. Even in the early 20th century, someone who worked for a newspaper could make fun of the way newspapers influence the news instead of just reporting the facts. And that is what Jesus was doing as the people gathered around to listen to him teach. He presented the objective facts about the kingdom of God. But those facts, like a good newspaper, can have the effect of comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable. So here's some background. In the verses just before today's passage, Jesus has been up on a mountain praying all night. When the sun comes up, he calls together 12 of his followers and makes them apostles or sent ones. Then he comes down to a level place and starts to teach. Henry Nguyen, a Dutch Catholic priest, suggests we tend to do things the other way around. If we have a problem or a task, we try to go it alone and solve it ourselves. If that fails, we might call on a few friends, and when all else fails, we put our hands together and pray. But Jesus starts in prayer, gathers his friends, and then gets to work. And that work includes more than just talk. Luke writes, 
All in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Jesus is right in the middle of the crowd, sending out healing power to everyone within reach. And Jesus doesn't seem to care who is Jewish and who is not. He heals all of them while standing on level ground. The importance of noting level ground here is that level ground is something that is plain and has no obstacles on it. Level ground is fair for everyone, a place where all opportunities and possibilities are equal. We can also look to the Old Testament and specifically Isaiah chapter 40 verses 3 through 5 for the importance of level ground. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So here is Jesus standing on level ground, revealing the glory of the Lord to us in our broken, uneven world. Here is Jesus offering to make our rough places plain, just as he stood on that Galilean level place, sending healing into the crowds around him, describing the blessings and the woes that will inevitably come as the kingdom of God is made real. Now, at first, it really does sound like Jesus has things backward. We might think riches, food, and prestige should be good for us. But Jesus says these things are the source of woe. And when these same things are scarce, we are blessed. It just seems to go against everything we believe. So let's take a deeper look at these blessings and woes. What do all of the blessings have in common? They all share the kind of poverty that depends completely on God. And what do all the woes have in common? Seeking our own satisfaction. We are blessed when we are God-centered, regardless of our earthly circumstances, and we find woe whenever we are self-centered. When Jesus blesses the poor and hungry, the sorrowful and the ridiculed, he isn't saying that we should all aspire to poverty, hunger, sorrow, or being verbally abused. He is saying that God is present with us even when the world has abandoned us, that God loves us even when everyone else hates us. We find blessing in seeking God, being hungry for God, and loving the people that God loves. When Jesus announces woe to those who are rich, who eat well and enjoy fame and admiration from people, he isn't saying that wealth, good food, and popularity are bad things. He is saying that when we are focused on satisfying our own appetites, we have turned our attention away from God, and our self-centeredness will be our spiritual doom. When we seek God, we feel the pain and sorrow God feels for people who are hurting. We stand up for injustice. We affirm that every human being is worthy of love in God's sight. When we are hungry for God, we want the things God wants. God wants every person on earth to know him and love him. Jesus isn't commanding us to work at becoming poor so we can receive blessings. Jesus is stating how things will be in the kingdom of God. The things we value in this world have no value in God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, the only thing that has value is grace. God's kingdom levels the playing field for everyone, and quite often, that's not comfortable for us. Whether or not we want to admit it, we often prefer the way the world elevates some and values others less. I mean, when we are on top looking down, the view is pretty sweet. The vistas are clear. Nothing stands in the way of what we want to see. Still, we have to realize that the top of a mountain can be a lonely place. But we don't much like being at the bottom of the heap looking, looking up either, which leaves us only the level plain. And even that makes us uncomfortable. Caroline Lewis, a seminary professor, once wrote, The level plain reminds us of how much we don't feel worthy to be on the same level as others, that as soon as we start to see ourselves on the same level, we start to wonder, where should we cast our gaze, up or down? We start to wonder, why is it so hard to look sideways, to look around us, 
beside us, in front of us. And that brings us back to verse 20 of our reading. Jesus looked up at his disciples. This is why I think Jesus was on the level place down by the lake and the people were sitting on the hillside where they could all see him and he could see them. He made eye contact. From the level plain, Jesus stands looking us in the eye. God sees us. God sees us whether we are poor or rich, and Christ names our poverty or our wealth for what it is. Jesus isn't encouraging us to get rich or become poor. Jesus is inviting us to put everything at his disposal and follow him. Jesus sees us. Jesus knows us, the real us, not the good face we put on so others will think well of us. God sees you and will stand with you. When it's hard to see, when things aren't going quite right, when you're experiencing the kind of suffering and hardship that happens in life, Jesus is standing there with you, sending healing power your way. God sees you and wants to bless you. There isn't anything you can do to change that. Nothing you do can make God love you less, and nothing you do can make God love you more. God won't give up on you. God's blessing is for you whether you come from holy Jerusalem or from the pagan coastlands of Tyr or Sidon, whether you've been a Christian all your life or you're a skeptic who just wants Jesus to make you whole. Christ pronounces God's blessing on you. This doesn't necessarily mean you won't struggle, but it does mean you can live through whatever life's struggles bring you, knowing Christ is with you and your reward is great in heaven. Throughout Luke's Gospel, the emphasis is on God with us, Emmanuel. Jesus stands on the level plain with us, showing us God's kingdom in the middle of our chaos, in the middle of our need for healing. The only question is whether we will reject such amazing grace or be willing to stand in that level place with Jesus and receive God's blessing. And now, let us, God's people, pray. All-knowing God, guide us through our darkest and weakest moments with the assurance of your blessings, helping us to remain rooted deeply in faith with delight in your law. O Lord, our strength, we put our trust in you. All-knowing God, turn all leaders of government across your creation, away from the false counsel of cursed mortals with wicked intent, toward choosing to prosper all of your beloved and standing upright when judgment comes. O Lord, our strength, we put our trust in you. All-knowing God, embrace the hearts of all who are seriously ill, addicted, or life-weary, and give energy to those who see to their care. All-knowing God, surround those who mourn with your perfect peace, as the glory and joy of eternity now enfold those we have sent ahead of you. O Lord, our God, we put our trust in you. God of hope and healing, as you test our minds and search our hearts, keep us mindful of the choices we make in all that we do. Endow us with the courage to accept and trust your blessings where we are, and to be spared the woes of those whose hearts turn away. We ask through Jesus our risen Christ and the Holy Spirit, sanctifier of our souls, who together with you are one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.